So um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, using Galaxy File Source plugins to work with remote data in Galaxy. Um, the slides are available here. Uh, this talk will be broken into infrastructure and applications. Uh, to motivate this work, let's talk a little bit about getting data into Galaxy. So in recent years, the user experience around uploading da data into Galaxy has gotten a lot better. Um, web browser technology has eliminated a lot of the limitations that plagued us in the past, and we've architected Galaxy's back end to handle large uploads with less configuration pain, and the front end to deal with large numbers of uploads better, with tools like collections, rules, and uploader UI improvements. But upload is still limited. Um, the files need to be on the researcher's machine or available via public HTTP sites, and the UI and robustness in the web browser will never be able to compete with FTP or file managers, etc. So FTP upload and library directory uploads are still more usable and robust at scale for getting data into Galaxy. Unfortunately, these two mechanisms are not very general. Um, configuring uh, Galaxy to talk to an FTP server has a variety of options. Um, using the, the API is very different than other uploads. Um, and the very different user experience than using library uploads. Um, and these limitations and differences are entirely historical artifacts about how these systems were developed and the narrow use cases they were trying to solve. None of the differences or complexities are reflect, reflect useful differentiation that admins, users, or developers would want. Um, one case where this is not true is the remote files API. So this is an API for like listing files and it, can list files in, in library import directories or FTP directories. And, and, and so while the upload is still sort of bespoke at every level and, and different, um, this is a nice piece of technology that really makes it clear that these are essentially the same thing and could be easily generalized. Um, so the key realization to this work was noting that if Galaxy can sort of seamlessly upload HTTP or file prefixes, why can't it also upload um, FTP, you know, Galaxy specialized Galaxy FTP or Galaxy import directory um, URIs and, 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 and navigate them the same way. So much like there was a remote files API, um, the piece of code for streaming data URIs uh, was synchronized across upload mechanisms. And so it was right for generalization. Um, so we'll, what we did is we added a pluggable system um, so that admins can configure different URI schemes for browsing and resolving files. Um, and, and this was 988. Eight. Um, after this was uploaded, I mean, after this was merged, um, you know, both the remote files API and then tools, including the upload tools, could treat these URIs uniformly. Um, so GX FTP or these GX imports or even custom plugins um, could all sort of be treated as simple URIs and uploaded and browsed the same way in the API. Um, so, you know, the awesome upshot of, of merging these code paths is that we could implement real plugins. Um, and so we added this uh, plugin file, um, configuration file, config slash file sources config.yaml. Um, and then here's like an example. Um, we, we, we have a Dropbox demo demonstration plugin um, for the lab's Dropbox files, um, you know, documentation that appears in the UI for the user, an access token that the whole lab will sort of share. Um, and then now if, if this file is configured with this, you know, these, everything that's GX files lab Dropbox, this ID, um, can be browsed and uploaded um, as URIs. And then we also added an upload dialog um, that can browse the uh, Dropbox files. This configuration file is templatized, so it can access user preferences. So in this case, um, you could set up a user preference to read this, this access token on a per user basis. Um, so if I have this as my Dropbox, and I, I can configure in the user preferences my API um, access token, um, then in the um, upload dialog, instead of um, choose FTP files, I'll have choose remote files. It's a generalization. And along with my FTP directory, there's also the uh, Dropbox directory. And I can dig in and see those Dropbox files now. These are the FTP files in the same, in, in, for the same instance. And you can sort of see the, the user interfaces are, are identical for navigating and dealing with these. Um, that's great. And, and, a question that might pop up is what's the difference between um, 
these file source plugins and, and object stores. And it, it really comes down to object stores providing data sets, not files. Um, so the, the files are sort of organized logically by Galaxy in a very specific way around the concept of a data set. Where a file source is providing a, a description of files and directories as we sort of typically think of them. Um, and they're meant to be browsed in a hierarchical fashion. Um, there's also no concept of like extra files and, and things that would be in a Galaxy object store. Um, also, object stores are assumed to be persistent where file sources don't need to make that same assumption. Um, we, at this point, have a bunch of plugins for the plugin infrastructure. Uh, they sort of all descend from the base file source class in Galaxy file sources. We've got the um, a, a POSIX variant that includes the sort of Galaxy FTP and, and, and upload directories. We've got a specialized SF3FS um, plugin, and then we've got a bunch of plugins based on uh, Pi file system too, including the uh, Dropbox plugin that we've seen, um, the Anvil one that will be demoed later on, uh, um, and many others. Pi file system two is um, inf is is an exciting project that provides a sort of common um, layer or common file system extraction for Python, and, and we've we've added infrastructure for rapidly adapting Pi file system two plugins to Galaxy file source plugins. Um, Pi file system two provides numerous backends. And if you'd like to integrate Galaxy with some custom data source or layer, implementing it as a Pi File System 2 plugin um, means that you can just need a small wrapper around that Pi File System 2 plugin mm -hmm. to write something that's very general but still useful inside of Galaxy. Um, and so this is what we did for, for instance, our Anvil plugin that we'll see later on. Um, after merging the real link uh, URI PRs, we, we immediately started working on additional functionality. Um, for years, we've talked about being able to write like ex history exports to the FTP directory because that's so much, you know, more robust for downloading for, Gal for, for Galaxy users. And so what we did with our, our next big iteration on this functionality is formalize the interaction with tools, allow plugin sources to be marked as writable, um, and, and, and implement that ability to, to write to FTP directories. We've in included some example tools. Um, that sure show you know how to how to load up the, the the file source configuration file and and access the interface from inside of a tool, and then how to you know get the directory as a as a tool parameter and how to write the file source configuration um, as a config file for the tools. Um, with that infrastructure in place, then we were we were ready to sort of revise the history import user revise the user experience around history import and export you know so we significantly overhauled this um, at the end of 2020 luke's demo um, at the end of the talk will show off this but some key points are histories can now be written to galaxy's ftp directory so this has been long discussed and and desired feature um, before only this link option was available um, likewise you can import um, from ftp directory or any any remote file source any, any sort of file source plugin. Um, this, this rewrite process um, had a bunch of other goodies involved. We migrated everything to Vue.js. We provided actual feedback on what's going on and real error messages. Um, and the whole u user interface, even for the old link-based approaches to history import and export are, are much more robust now and much more um, clear. Additionally, um, the EU and David implemented um, support for securing file source plugins. Um, yeah, and that was very appreciated. Next, skipping to applications. Uh, Bjorn, of course, quickly turned this fun infrastructure into a really nice practical way to access large amounts of public data. He added a public FTP plugin and a vastly more stable S3 plugin. Um, and, and this is just one page of the data sources that are browsable from use Galaxy EU as of today. Uh, a bunch of these data sources are Amazon open data sources. Um, these data sources are hosted for free on Amazon S3, and they include the important resource such as a uh, COVID-19 data lake. Uh, here we can see sort of navigating into the data lake. Um, additional bio-related resources um, include genome atlas, encode, a thousand genomes, genome arc, Amazon has made a bunch of various client models and observational data available, um, all that's linked to on the EU. 
and then a bunch of public FTP servers, including um, EBI and CBI Ensemble, are available for browsing and importing, as well as a few COVID-19 FTP resources. Uh, next up, we're going to see a demo um, on Anvil uh, done by uh, Luke and demonstrating the uh, Anvil plugin. Here we have an Anvil workspace. If we select the Data tab, we can see data that we've selected previously for inclusion. In the Tables section, we have a BigQuery table, which is a BigQuery that we previously performed. Here we have a DIRS, or Data Repository Service URI, which points to a Google bucket file. Here's a cohort, which represents a BigQuery query to be performed, but is not yet. And we have other tables that can contain data as we see fit. Here's one such table that contains GSURIs. All of these files live on Google buckets. Here is a much bigger table, similarly structured. We can also have reference data, which is Again, similarly structured, uh, but this is a bit less relevant for Galaxy since it often has reference data bundled. Here we can see our personal data. These are arbitrary key value pairs that we've specified, which can have DIRS URIs or GS URIs or any such thing that we'd like. And here are some of our personal files, which include any Jupyter notebooks we might have made and a text file that I added. Normally, to launch Galaxy, you would select Notebooks and create a cloud environment for Galaxy, but you can also run the Anvil file system plugin locally as we are here in Galaxy 2105. So we have a fresh history ready to go, and we want to get some data in it. So we load our own data, choose Remote Files, and note Anvil is an option. The top level directories are the same as in the data tab. In the tables, we see the same tables represented as folders. The contents of the folders will be a TSV that represents these tables, literally. Let's grab this one. And then whatever files might be referred to by some of the entries in the TSV. Note here that the DIRS URI has been resolved to the actual file it is and not just a UUID. If we look at that very large participant set, we can see that it has several kinds of files, lots of files. Fortunately, we can narrow it down. So let's look for some CRAM indices, as they're relatively small. And let's grab one of those. Now we can look at some of our personal data. Note in the arbitrary key value pairs, the referred to files are an option in addition to just that TSV. And here's the text file. Let's grab all of that. And in normal Galaxy Flow, hit start, which will create an upload job. Ta-da! The big query was performed. Google buckets were grabbed. And all the contents are as we expect. But this is a workflow application. So let's run some tools on this data. We can select a simple tool cut to remove and excise one column from our workspace, that TSV. Is it eliminated by commas? No.
you submit this job, it is executed, and lo and behold, success. We have our single column requested. Now that we've done that, we have the option to save our history to be restored later or shared with colleagues. We do that by selecting export history to file and choosing a remote file. The only place on Anvil that is actually an uploadable directory and not just a table of some sort is files. So we select that which represents our workspace's Google bucket. We select the name, my cool history, and we export it. Under the hood, Galaxy will compress all of these files, include pertinent metadata, and then push it to our selected location, our personal Google bucket. success. We can see the success in the data tabs in our files as we looked at previously. Ta-da! Great! So we can use the same plugin to pull this history. We import from file choose a remote file, the one we just created, and let Galaxy work its magic. Great success. But did it really work? Let's have a look. Here we have the same files as we did before at the same size, same content. Excellent. The Anvil file system plugin can be found on PyPy, the Python package index. and the source code can be seen on the Anvil project organization. And with that, I'd like to thank the whole Galaxy community for building awesome data integrations. Thanks so much.